Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. Let me start today's video with a little announcement. So, we have just hit 2000 subscribers here on the channel. Yeah, it actually happened a while ago uh, while I was editing this video you are watching right now. So I am fresh of the news and I am super excited. I am super grateful. Thank you guys for subscribing, for supporting, for all the positive comments, all the positive feedback. You are just the reason why I'm doing it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is amazing. This is major. And yeah, I hope for more. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I hope that we'll be celebrating 3000 soon. No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm super amazed how this channel is growing. We had a lot of new people joining uh, recently. So thank you for that. I'm super glad that you like my videos and you want to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, if you are watching this video and haven't subscribed yet, please consider to do so. Please click the subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me. Thank you again guys, I am so happy today, I am super excited. And yeah, let's move over to today's video. So after many requests, yeah, I've seen those comments. We are building a moose habitat today. Yeah, there were a lot of comments, a lot of requests about the moose habitat that you guys wanted to see me building it. So today we are doing just so. And I am actually not surprised by your request because I really enjoy this animal and I think that, yeah, we were missing it at Planet Zoo for sure. Uh, so adding it to the game is really really nice, really exciting and of course it is a really really adi nice addition to our zoos. So let me build something very cool for it today. Yeah, I was waiting for the moose to be added from the very beginning. I remember when I played Zoo Tycoon 2 uh, a lot <laughs> when I was a child. Uh, I always loved to add, you know, moose uh, to my zoos. We had it in the base game of the Zoo Tycoon 2. Uh, yeah, I loved it. I really enjoyed this animal and yeah, having it here in Planet Zoo brings up many memories. I also really, really love the moose as an animal. For me, it is so like impressive. It's so large and so like majestic and also a very very interesting animal so yeah we are we have it now and i am very very happy about this i actually have a little story about the moose uh, i will share it with you guys uh later in this video but yeah it was quite a funny one uh so if you want to hear it stay tuned because it basically uh, includes me being scared to death, <laughs> so if you want to hear this story, definitely stay tuned. Let me just say that this video will be quite a long one. Yeah, this habitat will be actually huge and there will be a lot of details such as uh, a little creek in there, a large like water area, some forest parts, uh, some water plants, a shelter, a holding pen, a viewing taras. So yeah, there was a, there will be a lot in this video. So sorry that it is a bit longer today, but I just wanted to squeeze in all of those things into this video. To make it a bit shorter, we'll keep parts of terraforming, just you know, smoothing the terrain and so on. Uh, then adding some rocks, adding plants. Uh, I will just show you like the beginning of the stuff that I do, and then I will skip because without it, this speed build was actually uh, nearly two hours. So I uh, I was able to cut out most of it, but still, this video is very very long because it took me so much time to build this habitat. But I enjoyed the moose so much that I wanted to give it a really really nice. Uh, habitat so I hope you guys will enjoy it as well. Before I started to build this one I actually did some research online uh, as I always do uh, to look for um, some inspiration but also to look how a typical moose habitat is looking. Uh, I have actually moose here in my local zoo so I've seen this habitat a lot, I know this one but I wanted to look for inspiration somewhere else 
And I was actually surprised because the moose habitats in zoos are very very different. Some of them are very plain, but some of them are so large with so many like details that they're, they look like parts of forests or parts of a marsh or something like this. And they are actually a very very lush habitat. There are a lot of plants, trees and so on. So yeah, I was actually very surprised by this because uh, normally when you think of an like regular ungulate habitat in zoo, it is very plain. There are not a lot of grass and other foliage because it is simply eaten by the animals. So it is very high, hard to maintain, uh, you know, the foliage in the habitat unless it is protected by some mesh or something so that the animals cannot access it. But the moose habitats are often very, very lush with a lot of bushes, grass and uh, some trees. So I did some digging, further digging, and I read that moose actually, uh, they don't eat grass and things that are, that are basically growing on the ground. And that's because they are so tall that it is somehow uncomfortable for them, you know, to lean down and eat the grass. They prefer to eat branches, bark of the trees uh, and things that are like more accessible to them. And also if they're fed uh, like a right amount of food, they won't eat, you know, uh, parts of their enclosure. So uh, that's why today we'll go a bit crazy <laughs> with the foliage, let me say. Uh, it will look a bit different than uh, the than other uh, habitats in Elm Hill City Zoo. I mean the ungulate habitats. They were more. They were always uh, more plain, uh, and I explained it in all the videos that you know the plants would get eaten. So if you want to keep to this realistic zoo style, we must, uh, you know, uh, limit our plants, use them only when the animals cannot reach them or use the species that they won't eat because they won't enjoy it. But here we'll make something totally different. Yeah, I was so happy that the moose were added to the game and uh, I just like them, those animals so much. I love them in uh, Zoo Tycoon 2 that I wanted to give them a really, really nice habitat. And while doing my research, I found a habitat online that was recently opened, like recently built and opened to the public. And it is an Alaskan uh, moose habitat in the Potter Park Zoo in Michigan. So thanks to uh, it being like newly built, I was able to find some concept art of it and also I found a site of a constructor that actually built this habitat and they had a lot of photos in their portfolio uh, of this habitat so I was able to get a lot of pictures from every angle uh, so it was easier for me. Of course, this habitat isn't like an actual recreation. Um, it is more like inspired by it. Some things were just like impossible to recreate in game. Uh, also, I made it a bit more lush with a lot of more plants than the original one. Uh, so yeah, if you have been there by any like accident, if you live in Michigan, uh, please tell me maybe if you uh, you know can see that like this is similar <laughs> to this habitat, it would be cool uh, because sometimes you guys actually uh, comment and you saw so you see the inspiration right away because you've seen some uh, you know habitats for example uh, the elephant and rhino house was a bit inspired by the copenhagen elephant house and some of you guys actually uh, i know left the comment here or on facebook groups when i also uh post the photos of my habitat that you totally see the resemblance and uh that was so cool to me so yeah if you were in the potter park zoo in michigan Definitely tell me if this looks a bit like it. So, as you guys could see, I am working on this crazy creek waterfalls creation something <laughs> that includes tons and tons of rocks. And yeah, this was actually heavily inspired by this zoo that I told you about. 
uh, they have it and I thought that it looks so so cool they also have it with a lot of rocks there is this creek coming down to this huge water area and I wanted to do it because I thought it looked so cool so beautiful and I wanted to somehow recreate it uh, there will be this like uh, bigger taras for the guests and the guests get this perfect view for this waterfall and the uh, water this creek slowly coming down to this water area uh, so yeah I wanted to make it like a cute scenery uh, for watching this habitat uh, for our guests to enjoy uh, unfortunately because we use so many rocks uh, the moose cannot like cross it they cannot go there but they still have so much of uh, you know uh, traversable area in this habitat that this doesn't bother me at all I think it's just for the sake of decoration for looking nice so they don't need to use that at all I obviously skipped uh, some parts of adding those rocks because uh, it was just so much work and it was so repetitive that I didn't want to bore you guys with you know just adding rocks for half an hour or something uh, so yeah, I saw I showed you some parts. I skipped some, and I sh I am sure that you have idea of how I exactly made it. I had a small issue with the waterfalls because it is very very hard to achieve this uh, you know look of a small waterfall that is not so intense that the water is just coming down slowly like peacefully. Because all of the water effects, all of the, you know, uh, waterfalls that we have in Planet Zoo, they are so, so intense that, uh, yeah, it is very hard to achieve this look of, you know, small little waterfall. Uh, so I have to sing down uh, a lot of those, uh, you know, effects, special effects. So only like some of it is sticking through the rocks, but still it looks a bit too, like, intense for me. But there is nothing we can do about it uh, and it has to stay like this so if I could have any <laughs> additional uh, yeah, like you know requests uh, to the planet zoo team is to make like those little creeks uh, coming down the rocks like waterfalls that are not so huge and so intense it would be very very cool I have a lot of those requests in my videos I know but I think that those things would be actually used by the players just as our one-way puffs we still don't have them so yeah we have the barriers and the curbs so this is so cool I really really appre appreciate that but one-way puffs especially like for houses reptile houses and things like that i think it would be so so cool so i still i'm waiting there are so many other things that i requested but it is not a video for that maybe i'll actually make a separate video you know saying with a title things that caesar creates requests from the planet zoo in the future <laughs> Sorry guys, I am in a very good mood today, I hope you don't mind my stupid jokes. But yeah, I also forgot to tell you that I will uh, put uh, the links to the pictures of this habitat in the description down below. I used to put them on the screen, but uh, I think uh, I cannot actually do it because of the copyrights. Uh, I'm not sure but I prefer not to do it. They are not my pictures So I will put the link down if you want to see uh, The you know the habitat that I was inspired by Definitely go and check it out because it will make more sense to you the things that I'm doing right now Okay, I see that we already uh, finished the work on our huge rock formation with a little creek uh, So let me just tell you guys uh, three things about it uh, the Rocks in the waterfall are actually a bit darker because I then thought that the wet rocks are actually darker in color so to uh, like help you imagine that they are wet from the water coming down they are in this tundra biome color. Uh, then the water comes out from under the huge lock because it is basically a huge filter like filtration the water is pumped in there from the 
uh, you know, this whole big body of water. So we had to have somewhere that the water will magically appear. So it comes out of this uh, lock. And also there in their original build, they use a lot of this, you know, uh, bark that is on the ground. And there are some plants, uh, you know, planted in this bark. I sh I'm sure you've seen this like bark pieces, it is very popular in gardens and so on. So they use that and yeah, I at first I didn't know how to recreate it, but then I figured out that we have this bark puff, so I added this puff in there. Uh, and it looks so cool that I think that maybe in the future I will use it more because I really like the texture of this puff. Uh, and yeah, later on the later stage, I will somehow hide uh, you know the edges of this path with foliage and rocks. But you will see it, of course, in the cinematics down on the end of this video. And yeah, right now, as you can see, we are uh, working on our viewing Taras slash viewing uh, area. I don't know how to call it, but it is heavily inspired by the. A moose habitat from the Potter's Park Zoo. So the guests will have a very lovely viewing for our moose. Actually, while recording this video I uh, and preparing for it, I actually learned an English language fact that I didn't know, that the plural form of moose is simply moose. I didn't know that and I'm glad that I checked it because uh, if I didn't, I, throughout the whole video, you will probably hear mooses, mooses, and mooses because I was convinced that the plural form is mooses. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad that it came into my mind that I should like check it because I didn't see in all the descriptions and so on the form mooses. So yeah, definitely uh, the plural form is moose. Uh, so right now I know it and I won't make any mistake. As you know, guys, I am not an English uh, native speaker. I am like a bit self-learned, a bit school learned, a bit, you know, additional lessons after school, <laughs> schools learned, learned but uh, mainly uh, I learned from watching TV, playing games and watching series and and my travels and having some international friends because I again saw some questions about my accent about where I'm from so just to clear clarify that so yeah I am not an, a native English speaker I am a Polish guy living in Poland and my accent is probably a bit Polish <laughs> so just in case if you wonder why I sound like this Okay, and quickly about our viewing area for uh, the moose. So we have uh, there some barriers uh, that are made from wooden pieces. This is very inspired, as I told you guys, by this original build. Uh, they had a bit of height variation in those poles, uh, vertical poles, but I couldn't do it because we hadn't have like those very tiny ones. I only had uh, one meter, so I had to work with that. Uh, this is supported by this whole metal construction that you saw me building. This is above the water, so uh, just as in the original build, I wanted to have like above the water. Uh, so there are some beams that come down in the water. Uh, the whole uh, viewing area is surrounded by this uh, wooden like fence or barrier for the gas. And down uh, in one part we have, in this like Taras part, we have like a stone uh, surrounding uh, in the lower parts because there are some plants growing there, so this is basically a huge planter. And in uh, this like broad walk we have uh, just an electric fence down there and it, this is also inspired by uh, the original builds. Unfortunately we cannot make this uh, you know higher because normally I would put it all the way up to the path but you know the fence and the path they don't match in this game so uh, I had to leave this gap but I don't think it looks bad the moose still wouldn't be able to squeeze in there of course it's not an electric fence because we cannot have electric fence in water uh, because those animals would simply fry in there uh, but yeah this is just like a wire uh, wire uh, fence for them not to swim under this broadwalk 
After being done with the viewing area, I went on to creating a huge bench for the guests that will be like surrounding a planter. Uh, this was also inspired by the uh, original Potter Park uh, Zoo Moose Habitat. There's also something like this in there. Uh, I actually hid there like uh, normal benches from the game, so it is totally usable. The guests can go and sit in there, so this is so cool. Uh, and I really love this bench, I think it looks so nice with the tree growing up uh, from there with some bushes down there, so yeah, I think it looks very 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 nice and it is just a little and nice touch to our uh, viewing platform. I also uh, quite accidentally uh, like set the color of this branch to this very very realistic one, it looks like uh, it was painted but somehow the paint just faded away with time and yeah I really like the look of it. After being done with the bench and with the uh, planter I will move on to creating some like custom wall, stone wall that will hold the terrain. Uh, when where the habitat is a bit lower down into the ground. I made it from the temple pieces uh, like in different shapes and sizes and changed the color to this brown beige one and I think that it looks really really cool at the end. Uh, on the top of this uh, you know this wall I will put uh, some barriers just to make sure that it is high enough for the animals not to jump out of the habitat. And after being finished with that, I will actually create my own custom fence for this habitat using the locks, the mesh pieces, and also a little like door knobs that were added with the uh, Africa pack. And those ones will be like uh, sunk into those locks and will be like holding this, uh, you know, uh, mesh piece to the lock so like it looks like it is clipped to it or something uh, but I figured that we had to have some sort of you know connection or something uh, that the mesh is actually uh, attached to those locks so this is a really cool fun little detail uh, it is not you know uh, you can only see this being very close to this fence but still I thought that it looked cool so the fence for the moose uh, must be very strong and must be very high because those animals can jump and they are also very very strong they also are a bit shy, although in the Zoopedia they are actually listed and as confident, which was a surprise to me. Because the moose, obviously in the wild they are shy, they are afraid of, afraid of humans. Uh, but in the zoos they get those huge enclosures, probably also because they are uh, a bit shy animals and they ha don't like to be too close to humans, they like to have a distance between them, they like to have a lot of bushes to hide themselves and this is also something that I wanted to do in here. But yeah, because of them being shy and being very easily to be spooked, uh, their fence needs to be strong. I know it because uh, actually in Poland some time ago we had this accident that the moose got spooked in uh, the habitat, in its habitat in the zoo. It happened in the city of Bydgoszcz. If you are in from Poland, you probably know this city. Uh, so it got spooked and it and it ramped not only the fence of its own habitat but also the fence surrounding the whole zoo and it escaped and unfortunately was hit by a car and they couldn't save it but you know there was a huge you know action in the city they tried to catch this uh, terrified animal but unfortunately uh, you know, it ended very bad for it, so that's why I know that we have to have a very strong fence. Uh, that's why we have this one pole that is like uh, supporting the logs but also the mesh. Uh, and yeah, I hope that it would be enough for this animal. So I also skipped, uh, you know, adding this fence around the habitat because it was just coping it over and over again. Uh, I showed you guys also adding some like fabric to this fence. It was inspired by this uh, original uh, habitat. 
but also we used it uh, in the Elm Hill City Zoo already. Uh, it is used, you know, to make those animals calmer so that they don't see what is behind the fence. Uh, they are more covered, feel more safe, and if there is something going on behind it, they are not bothered. Uh, so if you will be expanding our zoo in the direction like uh, behind this habitat, uh, the moose will still have some privacy. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to add a lot of those fabric pieces in there and also they are in this green color so they uh, They do like a perfect background for uh, the foliage for the habitat and basically it looks very good very cool and very very zoo like Right now, as you can see, I am creating a holding pen or a quarantine. This will actually be not a quarantine, it will be more of like an airlock from the shelter to the actual habitat. This will also be the place where they are giving their food, so there will be a feeder uh, by the end. Uh, there will be another holding pen that I won't include in this video, but I figured that since they are very solitary animals, because they don't live in herds like other deers and uh, and also they can be very aggressive during their mating seasons i thought that they should have like place the zoo staff that they could potentially separate those animals i wanted to have at least three of them because this habitat is huge so i always wanted one of them at least to be somewhere visible uh, so it doesn't look so empty uh, so yeah, if there are some issues with them being aggressive, they are also very aggressive when they have uh, small babies, uh, then I uh, thought about, you know, adding this holding pen and I will add it off the camera at the end because it was just a detail that I thought after recording this video and uh, I didn't record that. And yeah, because of the moose uh, loving and eating the tree bark, I actually had to add some tree guards or protectors, uh, so this time I went for like a mesh one. Uh, I've seen a lot of you know habitats having the mesh like wired around the bark so that they cannot destroy it. Uh, it is very important, although some uh, I saw some habitats without it, and uh, you know the bark was completely ripped off, eaten, and it looked a bit ugly. So I prefer to have it. Of course, in the game they wouldn't eat it, but this is like a really nice touch of uh, realism in our zoo. So I will create like two separate forests inside of this habitat. One will be like uh, behind this water area, I created it right now, and one will be like on the left side of our small waterfalls. And this one I will skip because it will be the same thing that we did here, nothing special. Uh, so yeah, just also a little trick guys, if you want to uh, if you want to create a higher tree that we have in game, for example, I used those ash trees and I wanted them to be a bit higher to, you know, make them look better in those, uh, those tree protectors. Uh, you can always flip around the tree and add like a missing piece of uh, trunk by simply connecting you know, the existing trunk with the one that was flipped upside down and it can create a higher tree just in case you need a higher tree. I thought about, you know, adding it because this like middle ash tree is a bit, you know, the bark, the, the trunk is a bit low and also this the smallest one I wanted to have some variation so I wanted to make it a bit taller. Uh, that's why I did it and yeah, I wanted to share it with you guys if you need such a trick. So, right now I'll be adding a lot of foliage, a lot of details such as, you know, broken trees and a lot of uh, small rocks to this habitat. Uh, I won't include the entire footage of making it because as I told you guys this video would be almost two hours uh, and we don't want it uh, so I'm sure that you'll be able to figure out how I did it because it will be the same thing as I am doing right now. Uh, but yeah, while I'm doing it, let me actually uh, share with you guys the story about the moose that I uh, promised you guys at the beginning. 
So, as you guys already know, I am from Poland and in Poland actually we have the moose living in here in forests. Uh, they are quite common, maybe not as common as the deers, but still you can uh, see some uh, from time to time. For example, when you are driving on a highway through Poland and uh, you know, uh, you have a good eye, you can see some moose uh, like near the roads and so on. I wouldn't recommend, you know, driving and looking for it on the sides of the road, but if you are a passenger, then sure you can uh, try to find some. I actually saw uh, many of them from the highway, but also uh, uh, in the forest. I have a family in the central part of Poland and they live in this area where there are, there are a lot of small creeks, uh, like uh reverse marshes also so it is an ideal you know area for the moose and actually and uh, you have to drive from small villages to go there and also i saw many moose uh, especially females i didn't have i only once saw a male with this huge antlers but yeah i saw some of them in there and this is where my story actually starts because uh in poland it is very popular during the end of summer and beginning of fall to go and collect mushrooms to the forest because we have a lot of those edible mushrooms that you can cook with and so on so this is like a polish tradition uh the whole family during the weekends you know goes in to the forest to look for mushrooms and then we clean them together and cook and so on but I really like it I used to love it when I was a child uh, right now I make it mainly to make my family happy but uh, yeah uh, so some time ago I think it was like five or six years ago I was I went for mushrooms to collect mushrooms with my family uh, to the forest and we somehow split up because you know someone everyone went in the different directions uh, there was no reception so uh, no service so i was a bit lost but i wasn't panicking because i'm an adult man and i sort of knew in which direction i should go uh, so i was going slowly looking for mushrooms go being totally alone in the forest you know uh, it wasn't very dense forest, but it still had some, you know, bushy parts and so on. And I was look going, you know, looking for those mushrooms. So I was basically looking like at my feet and on the ground to collect the mushrooms, not to the sky or like looking uh, straight ahead. And sometimes in the forest, you know, there are like uh, some piles of ground or, you know, dirt and such things. Just the terrain is very uneven, so there was like this huge pile of uh, dirt or something. And I just like, uh, you know, went past it, <laughs> tilted my hat up not to look, uh, you know, at the ground anymore. And... And suddenly, like five to ten meters, like from me, there is this huge moose that is lying on the ground and looking at me. It wasn't like completely lying down; it had still its head, you know, uh, above the ground, so it was just like chilling in there and looking at me. And I have no idea how it didn't hear me, or I don't know why it wasn't spooked by my presence in there. But we just like, I just stood there and looked at it, like frightened, I didn't know what to do and it was just lying there and looking at me and we were just like looking at each other. I think it was a female uh, because it didn't have the antlers, it could be a male that recently shed its antlers but I'm not sure completely. But yeah, we were just, you know, there. I didn't completely know what to do. I didn't know if I should, like, run away, if I should, I don't know, scream. Because all I knew uh, from some classes that we had in school, uh, like, we had these classes with the forest ranger, I think that this guy is called. So he basically told us what to do if we encounter different kinds of wild animals in the forest. 
And I remembered him, uh, you know, talking about the moose that they are can be very aggressive, especially in their mating seasons that they, you know, attack without thinking. They just go for you. So I remember those words and I was just there, you know, thinking to myself, okay, uh, look around for the nearest tree. We have to, you have to climb it very fast because I didn't, I was there alone and there was this huge moose, like, looking at me and it was as surprised as I am so I didn't know it's how its reaction will be so yeah we were just there standing looking at each other standing but luckily it stood up and started to run away in the opposite direction from me and I was so relieved because you know this is such a huge animal when you see it in the wild in the forest and it is so so big I was honestly super super frightened, I was terrified, I thought that it was gonna, I don't know, kick me, attack me, I don't know, bite me or do something to me. Uh, so yeah, I was glad that it didn't, I feel such a respect for those animals because really, they are bigger than a horse. If you thought the horse is big, they are way bigger, so just imagine encountering such a huge animal in the forest being alone and uh, basically not knowing what to do yeah <laughs> I was frightened and this is basically my story of course uh, I uh, found my family we went uh, together back home and of course they uh, like didn't believe me at all and yeah this was my little story about meeting a real moose in the forest so I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed it because I didn't. <laughs> As you can see, we already started to work on the shelter for our moose guys. Uh, this shelter will have like two parts. One will be more open. Uh, the second one will be closed, basically. Uh, the, in the second one, the moose could be potentially closed uh, if they want to sleep there. It will have only two stalls inside, although we have three moose, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't feed uh, the third one in there. Uh, but yeah, this is a really nice shelter. I know you guys like my shelters in this game, so I wanted to add it uh, for sure as well in this build. That's why it's probably so long, but <laughs> yeah, I like this shelter. I like the division to those two uh, different parts. Uh, also, this uh, green color again is very realistic and something you would see used in those uh, zoo buildings. Uh, also, while building this shelter, I skipped some parts, uh, so uh, I'm sure, guys, you'll be able to uh, like figure out how I did it. Like, you know, adding some plaster pieces inside, like uh, adding those, you know, detailing of those uh, metal green poles and so on. But yeah, this shelter looks nice, but it's really was really really easy to build. Uh, but in the end, I think it's still very effective. It was actually inspired by the other moose habitat that I saw, but unfortunately I cannot find this photo anymore. But yeah, you have to believe me that uh, it was inspired by some other moose uh, habitat in also, I think, USA. Inside of it, we'll also add some uh, of the feeders that we already built for some other ungulates in our zoo and uh, also uh, like uh, automatic water dispensers that the animals, you know, use their nose or tongue uh, to activate the water flow. It is very like uh, common in stables and so on and I'm sure that it would be usable by uh, the moose as well. Okay guys, let me give you some uh, quick facts about the moose. Uh, because of me being excited and uh, about my story about the moose, we don't have much time for those, but I will still sneak in some uh, fun facts for you. So, as I told you guys, moose are huge. Uh, the average female uh, weight is 350 kilograms and the males is 400 kilograms. And the length of their body is around three and a half meters. 
They are born knowing how to swim and continue to be great swimmers as adults. They uh, swim to help uh, keep their body temperature down on hot summer days, but also they are grazing on water plants. They can also dive, they can close their nostrils, that helps them to dive so that they can graze on underwater plants. I wish actually that they could dive in the game. They can stay underwater up to 30 seconds and they can run up to 35 miles per hour. They belong to the deer family and are the largest members. Only male uh, moose can grow the antlers. Uh, male moose use their antlers to fight and for self-defense. Uh, the fights are generally over a female. The antlers fall off every year in late fall or winter. New antlers grow through the spring and summer. They are soft and velvety at first and become hard by fall. Moose can be found in northern parts of the USA and in most places in Canada. In Europe they have large populations in Norway, fin Finland, Sweden, Latvia and Poland. And in Europe moose is called European elk. Okay, while we are working on this shelter, I will also like to tell you something more about this habitat. So, uh, as you can see, this habitat may not be perfect for the Planet Zoo game, just because the guests don't get this like perfect view uh, for the animals. I'm sure that they would normally complain that the view is okay or bad or something. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, habitats like this are so good for animals and me visiting the zoo, uh, seeing an animal in the distance and seeing that and seeing that it has this beautiful, you know, uh, natural enclosure, it for me, it doesn't make uh, any difference if I see it like from uh, three meters or 20 meters or 50 meters. I really love those kinds of enclosures when you have to make some effort to see an animal or if for example the animal decides to hide somewhere behind the bushes you won't get a chance to see it and it is totally okay uh, because the animals shouldn't be like in a spotlight all the time for you to see they need to have their you know uh, natural places to like hide to rest uh, especially animals like moose that don't like to be in the spotlight all the time. So uh, in case you are wondering why I build this habitat like this, this is my explanation and I hope you still like it. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today. Please enjoy the rest of the speed build while we are uh, finishing our shelter. Thank you again for 2000 subscribers, it really means a world to me. You are simply the best guys. And if you are not a subscriber of my channel yet, please consider to click the subscribe button. This would mean a world to me uh, and help my little channel to grow. And also uh, my new videos will show up in your feed on uh, YouTube if you want to see them. So yeah, definitely click then that subscribe button. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, show YouTube that my content is viable. Yeah, you could really make a difference here by clicking the thumbs up button. Uh, also, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And comment down below if you enjoyed this video, if you've seen a moose, for example, like me in the wild, uh, or if you have some any uh, experiences with moose, I would love to hear them. And of course, if you have any suggestions for my videos, uh, they are all very welcome. You can write them down in the comment section. I will for sure reply to all the comments. Okay guys, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!